When we talk about political activism, we usually don't want to talk about our failures. I'm going to talk about a failure that I've had recently and how, in the end, it became successful. Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. So I want to just talk about, you know, we oftentimes talk about political activism. I'm less likely to produce a video about my failures than I am about my successes. That's pretty normal. Uh, although I don't produce as many videos probably as I should about uh, either successes or failures, I think it's helpful to look at these. And one of the recent videos that I did a few months ago was talking about a ballot title challenge that I did uh, against Bob Ferguson's very wishy-squishy ballot title that he put together for some of his political friends. Now, the reason why I focus on Bob Ferguson is because it's his office that actually writes the ballot title, and they've had a significant history here in Washington State of skewing ballot titles based on the political affiliation of the people who are applying for um, initiative ballot titles. And so the one I specifically had filed this challenge on, and there's a very specific limited court uh, hearing that you can go through to do this. Um, and this was on Initiative 1922, and it had to do with making all hard drugs like fentanyl and cocaine and heroin legal on the streets, similar to what they did in Oregon, um, just causing a massive explosion in drug addiction and crime. And this was being pushed by the ACLU. So the ACLU has unlimited money and unlimited resources, and this was the initiative ballot title challenge that I, fi that I uh, filed. And I completely failed in my effort to change the ballot title. It was a total failure. I didn't succeed at all. Uh, I went in there and made my arguments. I had prepped the legal documents and the arguments in court. And I went before Judge Zip, who is one of the uh, newer judges in Thurston County, one of the few judges I haven't been in front of, actually. So uh, she gave me the big thumbs down. <laughs> she completely rejected my argument and uh, accepted everything the ACLU said. And so I failed. I completely failed. Now, however, it turns out that sometimes the first thing you come away after spending all this time and prep work, it didn't really cost me any money, but I was willing to put the time in and go to court and, and make my appearance. And the question is always, is it worth it? And I know that this is what activists think all the time when they're wondering, is this something to do? And I think you should always do kind of a cost-benefit analysis and decide, is this going to be what I spend my time as an activist doing or something else? But in the big scheme of things, I'm, I'm fairly used to doing these. So for me, I was pretty efficient, and uh, it was good to get through it. However, in the end, that I, 1922, which had an unlimited budget, ACLU deep pockets, uh, the momentum was with them, uh, and they put out a recent uh, on their website saying that they were going to pause. Basically, they failed. They did not get across the finish line, and they failed in their effort. And this is the best spin they could put on it, but they were trying to basically admit that it didn't work. I'm going to go to the Public Disclosure Commission website, which I always tell activists to go look at because it reports a lot of fascinating information about money that's been spent on politics. The ACLU spent $2.6 million out of a total of $3.6 million. It's actually going to be, when they final up the total cost here, it looks like they're going to be probably closer to $3 million or a little over $3 million. That's how much money they spent, and they failed too. Now, my failure was a lot less significant, but... I will point out, when you look at the background on this, uh, what really actually happened here. Well, one thing that happens, it's not the point of a ballot title challenge, but it is something that, that happens when you do this, is that the paid signature gathering had to start a lot later than they originally planned because of the ballot title challenge. That kind of kicked the uh, ball down the road for several weeks while we're, well, I was arguing back and forth with the attorneys and preparing for court, and it, it's a rocket docket, so it goes fast, but you nevertheless, it still delays things by several weeks. And for paid signature gathering companies, that becomes very costly and very difficult to manage because every week that starts to shrink, you have a only finite pool of people to collect signatures, and that pool starts to shrink down, and pretty soon you just run out the clock. They didn't have a lot of time. So the vendor started charging more after he had promised that they would be able to collect these signatures for a certain price, and it looked like that price became variable, and the vendor started charging a lot more than what they had promised, and so the donors of the ACLU, of course, started to balk. And eventually, um, they had to shift vendors. There were some arguments back and forth. They distrust started to ensue when either side trusts 
trust each other. Everything falls apart, and finally the vendors, the, the donors actually, they pulled the plug on the whole effort. They, arguably, they looked like they were about two-thirds of the way through, so they were getting close. They probably could have gotten across the finish line, but again, this argument that went back and forth ended up delaying things, and it cost more than they had projected, all because I think they got a late start, and all because of that ballot title challenge that I'd filed several months ago, and that I'd failed at. In the end, the failure was actually on their side, and not to mention losing millions of dollars, $3 million or so down the road. So uh, that's a good example, I think, of how things can be very different than what you initially think they are as an activist. It's very easy if you're an activist to feel very alone. It feels like you're lonely out there, and oftentimes you are, going into court alone, making these arguments alone, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, you oftentimes feel alone. You're working with other people, but sometimes it's just you out there uh, putting the hard time and doing the kind of the more tedious work. And usually people will oftentimes say, listen, I don't even want to try to do that stuff. There's very few people that want to jump in and be an activist that way because it just looks like it's so hard. It looks like you can't succeed. It looks like failure is going to happen. I just demonstrated that. I failed. However, sometimes that failure, because you showed up, because you went out and made a difference, because you tried and you tried to make an impact, that can result in victories you weren't even necessarily expecting to have. That can result in success that comes as a big surprise. It comes as a surprise not because it's just something miraculous that falls out of the sky, but it comes because you've gone out there and put the time in and made, made an effort, made the work, put the time and energy into something that you might not otherwise be willing to do. And I think it all ultimately comes down to a willingness, if you're going to be a political activist or engaged in the political process, be civically engaged in some way, you have to have perseverance. You can't let yourself just fold because it's hard or fold because it looks like it's impossible. You should still do an analysis to make sure that's the best thing that you can spend your time on. But, you know, I'm pretty efficient at the ballot title challenges, so I can do that pretty quickly. But other people, you'll find something that you're good at and try to be more effective with it. Because in the end, perseverance is what makes the difference. That's the difference between long-term success, even if you've had short-term failures along the way. It's very, it very much matters because, like I've said many times, the future belongs to those who show up. And showing up makes a big difference.